Okay, so I put a 25 pip uh, grid up here, and I'm going to try to keep this uh, just down to the MetaTrader core, except for this 25 pip grid. Everything else in here is just going to be uh, uh, stock uh, under the um, straight out of the gate. So if you go to properties, unfortunately, you can't see the video here. You go to uh, hit F8 on your keyboard, go to properties. It's actually off the damn screen, and I can't uh, drag the platform up. So. And the properties of the uh, chart is quite critical. I mean, psychologically, at least, if you're going to, uh, I guess if you care any amount of uh, care of anything, the color here, background color, is quite a, quite a psychological um, kind of uh, environment because uh, normally if you print stuff out on paper, unless you have colored paper, which you can get for uh, charts, it makes a big difference uh, how you view the world and whether it's a warm color or you know this idea that you're going into a war room to trade the market I guess from the standpoint of a samurai who's prepared to die but we can't the idea of skin in the game is just not something you just want to literally um, go out and drive a motorcycle as they call bareback which kind of changed its meaning later on I think um, but yeah, that's really, you know, a whole different world. So here I have the bar chart up in black. I chose black for the, uh, oh, here you go. Let's see your properties. I guess it's where you click. Oh, didn't even think about that. So uh, common is the, uh, all this stuff, which is critical too. And I always turn on, and it's always default that these show up periods. I want to see how much time has passed. So this is just secular from a, um, a linear cycle, which would just be, oh, it's the end of the year, duh. Why did the stock market sell off at the end of the year? It's crazy. Why? At the end of the year? You mean when people actually have to have, and now that everything's digital, everybody runs up to the, you know, in the old days, stuff would get in the mail, and if it gets there, people process digitally now. So the switch is harder, right? It's a harder switch. And that's what the, the, the uh, all the, uh, Everybody's aware of the fact that there's going to be a switch. So you'll see the high frequency. You know, everybody wants to get through that door at the, at the same thing. Of course, if you're running like five monitors and ten monitors and you've got a broker on each monitor, you'll actually see the whole landscape of, oh, this guy's 15-minute chart looks totally different than this other guy's 15-minute chart. The closing prices are literally offset and... Um, it's psychological arbitrage because now you're seeing the market like if you take two uh, pieces of music on vinyl and you play them slightly different you know it gives you a little echo so there's a little bit of a uh, so if you're living in a world say you're a scalper a half a second is like a really long time when the market is not going in your favor if you're afraid of losing that's totally bending your mind. So, you know, you just can see the fact that even when I had uh, advantage of seeing the market three minutes before, I was still losing money because I was so eager to get in these trades that I even knew were guaranteed winners that I couldn't resist just thinking, you know what, I'm just going to for... I mean, this is going to sound stupid, but for just kicks, I thought, oh, I'm going to buy a little bit right here. I know it's going up. Let me just buy. In fact, I don't think I put enough pennies in. I mean, this is the greed level that you can make so much money trading in such a short period of time. I was just watching Mark Douglas again, and he said, hey, listen, you could be making money. You don't even know why. You could. All you have to do is pull a trigger. There's no such thing as... Does this thing work? As soon as you step in the river, and of course you can't step in the same river twice because it's changing all the time. There is no point in taking these overlays like these guys are trying to do with the crash of 1920. They overlay it on the market. Now, are you serious? If that was true, I could just take even a, probably get it to run on one of these iPhones, you know, one of these, uh, I mean, probably run on a, on a phone, right? You can put uh, Windows 8 on a phone, right? So you can run insane algorithms on a phone now. There's no such thing as uh, you can't do it, right? It's like, I don't know, people just have it, I guess, too easy, right? That's why the world's not coming to an end. 
Um, of course, you know, nobody's going to make money from that. Uh, but, you know, uh, <laughs> I think, you know, you got to hurry up. And uh, But, yeah, so inside the MetaTrader thing, it's pretty complicated just here, right? I mean, I guess um, this is for people that have never traded in their life. You could spend a week playing around with just the properties in here because it's psychologically going to set you up for whatever's going to come at you whatever you're familiar with color wise is just a huge impact on your life uh, I, the other thing i think is the sense of smell is pr probably the most highly classified sliced out thing that's ever approached people you smell something and it take you back like 30 years or 30 months, instantaneous uh, <clears throat> um, references. Same thing I think with colors. People have a, a visceral re reaction to certain colors. And I'm colorblind, so it's a little difficult. Every time I put up these things, I wish I had some little notepad running the actual colors because uh, I don't want to offend anybody. But, I mean, that's just uh, being too, too sensitive. But, you know, it's hilarious. So, but I noticed the, um, and of course, the people, it's a desktop top themes. Either they've set them and they left on there, or they're constantly changing it. And uh, there's two camps there, right? There's, there's an argument there. So there's always the argument, right? And then it's about like, well, um, so, okay, if you start off and you just had not, if you can try to unlearn everything you ever learned about the market, that should be your goal. Like you should go to be strip yourself down to the point where you can start over and re uh, get back in the river. So since the river is, you can't step in the same river twice, which means just because you did a good trade here, you can't just come back and go, oh, that's going to work all the time. Boom, boom. Because the river's, well, the river's uh, always the same. But when you step in, you might be right on the crest of a wave. When you pull out your foot out of this river, it's already changed its wave pattern. If you don't move down the river with the river, okay, you can kind of simulate, you can kind of kind of, like, I'm just going to run at the same rate of the river and just keep putting my foot in and capture that same envelope. Wow, you know, you're going to have to be really good at, um, you can do this in audio where there's a look ahead. So, like, all your, all your processing can see what's going to happen and actually adjust on the fly real time going i can see it coming let me fill the buffer let me make it sound pretty so you can hear it in real time can't do that in the market you can't be like look you're trying to but all you can do is know that after a certain style of move you know you have to realize what phase you're in are you in a uh, is this the kick drum like the soundtrack, you could probably even take an audio file and see, oh, I can almost see that's rock and roll, or you can see it's maybe it's uh, recorded symf symphony dynamics, like there's spikes occasionally. You could probably even profile audio just by looking at that, right? And it, it's hilarious. So after I did this video yesterday, the um, YouTube robot picked up the fact that I said Steely Dan, and immediately I saw Steely, it kind of creeped me out, or maybe I'm just paranoid. Uh, doesn't mean somebody's not out to trick me, but they. I saw this uh, Steely Dan. Uh, oh, you want to see Steely Dan, do you? I thought, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I just said, Jesus Christ, I'd probably get a, a note from uh, those people that used to knock on your door. I have a Mooney give me a flyer, give me a flower in the airport. So, anyways, inside this MetaTrader thing, you can get a little lost, but I know the auto scroll here and the chart shift kind of is another thing. Now, this would be if you're cloud trading this thing. If you're the only advantage in cloud trading is that they have placed the moving averages by an offset into the future. Essentially, when you do this and you draw with trend line channels, you're really cloud trading. You know, you're hard trading clouds. The problem I have with a cloud trading is an echo off of a moving average which is already a problem right or it's off of this whereas if you do a hard if you just do a horizontal forget like forget the fact that these um 
offset moving averages are crossing over behind the market. Okay, this is like you're stepping in the river, but you've got like somebody else behind you stepping in the river, and he's the one that's like you're fake stepping in the river. He's he's stepping in the river. You're fake stepping in the river. I don't know. If that makes sense. So he's like um. He's like your guy. He's your guy on the side of the stage showing you what to do. Like he's like, move now. Here, I'm gonna make everything he does off stage. I'm actually the guy on stage. So I don't know what that you know, cloud trading stuff to me. Maybe I'm just too dumb to get it. But I'm telling you, I I hurt my brain and even had it on my MT4 mobile uh, Windows 6.1. I'm looking at it, freaking out. So that hurt a lot. Um. But yeah, so here I'm maximum zoomed out. I'm in, so I went to bars here. I went to the um, the bar chart and I set the colors up so the uh, the colors are like the the line graph is white, and the volume is none. The ask line is white, and the reason why I set the ask line to white and I set the um, let's see, the ask is to white and the closing price is to white. The reason why I did that because you can see the leading edge of the uh, spread in a visual formation on the chart because you always have to buy what is not on the chart you're this 90% of people lose trading no 100% of people that trade are completely losing the moment they paid a deposit fee the moment they put on their trade the second you pull the trigger you're in a loss all this hundred percent of people are losing at life because you're dying right this win-loss stuff you got to get it out of your head it's just never gonna you know this is a sad fact of reality the moment you pull the trigger especially if you're gonna trade these crazy pairs or whatever with these terrible spreads where you have to get in you have to get in on trades that are gonna make say you're gonna make a thousand pips you're gonna be down uh, if you just pull the trigger like uh, just out of nowhere for no apparent reason it doesn't matter you know what you know you have to start buying at some point so what's your smallest entry you need to put on the smallest thing you can put on so you can let go of the fact that you're missing out otherwise if you can have the understanding that just having money in your account is trading with a pending order that's still trading you don't have to have skin in the game you do not have to be taken to the skin bank okay it's not necessary but I understand that there is a as I guess it's a guy thing there's a gladiator factor of trading that um, you're going to weather the storm okay listen this is a game for pussies I mean in the standpoint of a passive you know this is a passive game this is not like there's nothing you have to do like if you still got enough money you just you're just um, if you need to trade you have to go to the five-minute chart but you cannot trade the five-minute chart like you're just gonna decide you're gonna let go and walk away in other words if you're going to go into a five minute chart you have to get in and out the way a five minute waves telling you you cannot ride this thing unless you're in so small that it wouldn't matter so that's is the size continuum there's a there's an equation from the center point of your pain level and if you don't mind you have to build up some callousness to taking more risk but that has to coincide with you like if you decide you're gonna start walking five miles a day you don't start at five miles a day um, same thing psychologically you're gonna blow up your brain like you're gonna blow up your heart or whatever part of your body there's no difference between losing your mind and losing a body part so just because you made a bunch of money in one particular event that maybe was surely like okay you just happen to have all of these orders out there and everything was queued up but maybe only half of that you um, were um, really uh, had a plan for it was more of just um, 
Well, you know, by chance, right? So, is that are you okay with making money by chance, or just by the um, the the odds, right? Well, a lot of people aren't happy with that because then they say, well, I'm just gambling then. Yeah, but you're making money. See, there's this whole terror. And, you know, if you go on these chat forums, people go, you're just gambling. Like, you're an idiot. Listen, um, if you're risking eight to make 400, you know, you're risking 10 to make 50. You're banking, if you have psychotic ratios in relationship to real money now this is the other side of the equation you can't just say you're living in a two-dimensional world the third dimension is got to be the real life rep realizing that um, it doesn't matter how much money you have it's not gonna make you a better trader because you have more money right you just there's no such thing as Oh, I just made a bunch of money uh, because I did a piece of artwork. People are like, okay, what do you got next? Like, you have to come back the next day and do it all over again. It wouldn't matter whether you won or lost. Okay, this is the sad realization. It does not matter if you win or lose. It's are you going to do something that is better tomorrow? Because otherwise... Um, if you're not constantly getting better at something you're you know you're stuck at oh I can make X you know um, now it's it's uh, when you start uh, making more money though you unfortunately you are gonna have to say goodbye to other beliefs that you have about what the market really is um, because a lot of people have projected their, uh, well, you can see it when you watch people's presentations. But there are such things as momentum. It's not like that. It's not like um, the market doesn't uh, repeat patterns. It's just that people are looking at this river, okay, the waves, and they're saying, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, uh, boogie board surf this one wave in the river and the other one I'm gonna get out a miniature guy I'm gonna get a miniature guy and I'm gonna put him out there he's only like really small and he's got a GoPro on his head he's really small and I'm gonna stick him out there and he's gonna he's gonna surf too he's gonna actually um, do the same maneuvers the larger wave guys trading um, but you you have to put on that five minute hat and you say okay I'm a five minute trader I scalp and I make my I'm making the same amount of money that this guy that is in this monster fucking swing trade with like not a big very big position because he just doesn't give a fuck right um not to be uh but i guess i swear what am i doing um but you know you just have this i don't care right um so you have this uh attitude and now it's just really like um if you had a garden you would walk out in the garden. You cannot force these plants to grow any faster than they're growing. Like, but you're starving to death, right? The patience, or the, not even patience. It's like the ignorement. You are ignoring this stuff. You have to be willing to. Because the problem is, if you're um, a curious person, now, the art, the 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 task is now to ignore stuff. Because if you're too involved, you become overwhelmed. I'm just speaking for myself now. You can get overwhelmed. And you're totally paralyzed by the possibilities of stuff that you can do. So that kind of backfires. But that, it's, um, it is the, uh, what do they call it, the disambiguation. When you break it down to whatever the smallest kernel, and then you say, okay, that's starting point. And that's your base, and you just walk away. But see, the part of that, um, so that the cure for that is to do things that don't risk any money, like changing the color on your chart. Okay, stuff like this is, I know it sounds silly, but if people talk about what's the best platform, well, you could take the platform you have. It's like, what's the best house to live in? I'm thinking, like, one with a roof. So every platform has all these little tweaks that are just built into the stupid um, stock you know factory out of the out of the box free program which can't beat that 
So all this stuff set up. So the leading edge here is the ask line, uh, the graph line. So if I zoom into the five minute chart, you can see that, and I'm going to zoom in so it becomes really hardly evident that, okay, we have a closing spread here of one and a half pips on the Australia to the uh, USD. And you can see this broker is asking you to buy this white line, but the bid is riding on the uh, the actual the line charts of the bid, which is actually corresponding to this. I can make it both white, but I wanted to make the ask uh, horizontal is the ask, and the line, the actual price where it's at, is the um, the bid. So if you buy it right now, you're you're a total loser. You're a hundred percent loser. Come on. I mean, this whole idea that we've never we've never had a losing trade that people so never the second you pull the trigger you're underwater. Are you serious? This is a big. I don't even know how people are tricking themselves. Um, I guess it's the people that say, "Well, you know, I'm a, I, I'm on this thing where I only eat this," but you just ate that. I mean, there's no absolutes, right? Well, there is absolutes, right? This is one. The moment you... Now, you could say, well, listen, I mean, I can make it back. And you're already in... A, like, the moment you pull the trigger on these trades, you're psychologically in revenge mode. You're like, I'm down? What the... Jeez, I... What? What? Huh? So, uh, if you're trading... Like, people talk about trading all this giant size. I'm like, well, hopefully not everything you do is, like, at the market, like a goofball. And um, even if you put in an order at a certain level, really? You could be right about that order? Holy shit. So you're going to put at least three dumb orders in there, right? You're an idiot. You have to admit that up front. You know where support is, right? Here is the five minute. You're, uh, it doesn't matter. We can look at any time frame. It's never going to matter. If you start off with a line chart and draw all your crap on the line chart, Forget about the wicks. It's complete nonsense. That's not the market structure. Okay. So you know, the problem with MetaTrader is the line chart. When I zoom out here, it's a little bit too thin for me. So I'm just going to change time frames because I don't want to lose the thickness of this line. So here's the 30 minute. Here's the one hour. So one hour is the max of max. Now, this is presupposing you could wait a whole day for this trade setup, but you have these touches here. And now this is Australia to U.S., which we're looking at Euro to the other one, the other video. Um, same pattern. We have the first trend is established right here. We know this is the uptrend because we have a higher um, swing down. And by the way, swings, these are swings. Okay, This is swings. I don't know what... I, okay, I know I probably anybody's seen me bitch about these candles is that wow it's like so complicated it's like you're showing up on the first date with this girl and she brought her whole family with her you're like honey like really like can we just i don't even know you right there's too much like i'm not even gonna turn the candles on that's how much anti-candle i am now this i'm gonna publish this in a candle thing but look at this Look at this doji finds ricochet off that. That's way better than Fibonacci. Now, certainly, you can take all of these lines I've drawn, and I'm sure if you do the ratios out of you, hey, this comes out to Fibonacci. Yeah, but who wants to take a Fibonacci tool? This is like taking a metric wrench to an American nut and trying to get it to, oh, you know, I can't open, I can't strip all the nuts in your car. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. You know what? When your nuts on your car, that sounds bad, your nuts on your car get stripped out maybe you gotta like reshave them to a custom point well the market's already shaved it to a custom point you're already there why fight it okay you have to see what's going on here in a clock and this is one hour so you do need the patience for three hours of this punishment right double top dead on right because not every bro every broker is different on the one hour and the 15 i forgot this to tell you the whole arbitrage thing, right? All the screens set up. You can sit there and watch the 15-minute charts. Every broker has a different end to that. Some guys are ending five seconds before the top of the hour. 
And some guys end at the top of the hour. At least I have like two brokers that do that. I know for certain in real accounts that these two guys are totally off by five seconds. Makes it completely different if you're so transfixed on a certain candle setup. It's technically, uh, you know, if you claim that you're objective, you're looking at both, and you're like, oh God, which one do I take? Now I've got two different conflicting data feeds. Now, you didn't have that problem before. You know, when you have Chicago Board Trade, you have one data feed. There's Forex is just really floating out there. Okay? Your broker is the one that you can arbitrage against him. He's not going to find out. It's not illegal. Um, like I said, if you don't have a day job, if, if you if you really care, you get a damn um, you know another monitor, right? Or you get another, and you work all this stuff because you have to build this thing. You cannot sit there and and wait for this one setup. Maybe you can. I don't know how much money you have to float on before you become. Uh, build your count up but you need to get to that point so you could just at least have some uh, um, security in uh, another way of I don't know if you know because I'm not going to go back to uh, you know test driving uh, Lear jets anymore I'm just kidding I don't do that but you know if you have a gig that's dangerous like say your football player or say you're just getting fucking tired of uh, driving in the car like i go in the car now and i feel like i'm in this competition like really like i almost need to there's certain roads around here where the the rich people are commuting and nothing against rich people with their brand new cars but there's like this like you know what i could just go like 10 over like really 10 over dude i mean i get that you're doing 10 over but you don't need to tailgate me within a like a just because your brakes are um you know loaded disc brakes do you really have to yeah, I can't see even the brand car here. Anyways, issues there. But so the the, the whole thing about uh, in this course, the problem here is without the candles, I, I do not really have a count of how many hours went by, and that is a problem here. So you could put a um, you could put a, uh, a, a dotted moving average on top. Maybe there's a way or there's a um, I can't remember the cure for that. But there's a way to just have a have a dot for each time so you can count the hours. Or you or that doesn't matter. Because here it's just structure. And every time you come to this line, right, you could look at it every hour. If you close there, boom, you hit it, right? Now I can't see how tight a stop you would have needed on that. Because I see no wick. Okay. But that doesn't matter from a person that doesn't trade with stops. Or trades with super wide stops. So this is 25 pip grid, so I can see already if we had a 25 pip stop and we bought here, we're still in. We're up 50. Okay, we doubled our money. Right. So I think uh, that's painfully obvious without getting it out of risk reward tool. I think that kind of just smacks you in the face. Um, if you had bought here, there's no way in hell. If you had to stop here, uh, of course I can't see. Maybe they did take it down there. Um, but this is 50 pips, so let me turn it on. But I guess you had to do the old, um, and this is the other approach, is to do a uh, kind of a karate kid uh, trading. This karate kid uh, technique is that you play wax on, wax off. So here's a 25 pip wick. Now, if you just switch between these, you're gonna find uh, these are whole different stories right here. Okay, you're on the date with the girl, and uh, here she is, right? This is what she looks like. And then you're like, oh, look at what she's wearing. So this is everything she's got on. And if I put on directionality to this, it would basically be, um, I guess the other aspect of her would be her attitude or her, um, she's optimistic or pessimistic. But this is just where she's been as far as pausing. So if you, this is going to make it so you're not going to judge any dojis on here. And so, where does this trend line end, end up at? Typically, ends up at the dojis. This is just, if you switch this wax on, wax off, you see that the places to, to place your, um, okay, as soon as you have this close here, this is a higher close, okay, you're in an uptrend. 
But what what does this always happen on every damn chart you've ever seen in your life? The kickback before the big move. That's when your buy limits come in. Forget this kind of that's your confirmation. Your confirmation is somebody just got their face punched in. Or this girl just broke up with her boyfriend, so you're like, really, honey? Tell me all about it. So, and not to mention that when you see the doji, it's time to think about um, putting the buy stops up here. You know this, you know this, um, this is going to happen, though. So if you are buying here, count on that you're not the only one that can that sees that. And you're not the only this is all the uh, another problem with the doji is just before a quiet okay, let me mark this up. Notice this behavior. Two dojis. And what do you typically get after two dojis? Smash and grab, right? A doji, smash and grab. A doji a, a, a northern smash and grab. A retest of doji. Forget the bullish bearish uh, on this. I'm just saying, and I don't say just let go of that whole concept. But it's not you're, it's not important to start stacking on all these things onto uh, your charts, and um, you have to look at the core of this market, which lives here. This is the beat. These are the. This is you can't hardly see that double top. Right? Can you see it? I mean, yeah, but you're looking at like here it looks like two. It opened and closed there, but you notice there's two candles making up that top. That's like four tops, not the four tops. But see, there's just two tops there. That is such a big to me that so striking in retrospect because this is a double bottom for people. Psychologically, if you ask somebody, well, how many bottoms are there? Well, this is, and I took the directionality out. Because as soon as you put that in, you're seeing this big body, but you're like, wait a minute, there's a bullish and bearish candle. Now what? I mean, you're, you're so stacking it against yourself. You're, you're lo not loading the wagon on the trade. You're loading the wagon on your view of the market doesn't not really know it's going up the market doesn't have a consciousness doesn't know that it exists it's just price it's people manipulating price and markets have to be manipulated for you to make money so this whole like oh they're manipulating markets let's hope so I mean this you know let's hope so how are we gonna make any money um, you want to stand on the sidelines, you know, in, in these these trade setups, these are trade setups, that's what I'm talking about. These, that's where all the money's at. Identifying a trade before it happens. And why it's going to happen. It's going to happen because lack of volatility and then too much volatility. So what is the volatility, um, what is the ATR on this from an open close standpoint? This is what you're looking at. The bodies of these candles are the open close ATR. It is not the true range of the wick to wick. It's a completely different thing. Right there, you've already got like a bifurcation that's going to take you down a 45 degree angle into some crazy uh, expansion of, you know, like possibilities. You know, now you're lost down a rabbit hole there, right? If you mechanically trade this, you're looking for a doshi. You're a mechanical trader. You don't care about any news or any stuff. You're like, you know what? There you go. The market's dead in the water. We lock, we lock in a hedge. We put the kickback orders in. We think it's going up. We know the trend. If you call that a trend, let's just call it price pulse inflection points. We know it's going to happen. It's stupid, right? You can see it here. The rule is, is and some guy said, well, "How can you?" I like when it comes to here. Actually, the first the first time you knew was a trend line was here. This is the first hour it comes down. Oh, we're an uptrend. Okay. This one here was without a doubt a retest of this trend line. Now, the market doesn't know that. 
but momentum of, well, the traders, the pain of the traders is what's driving it, right? The fear and the pain of the traders. It's not like a, it's not like humans aren't trading this shit. This is not coming out of like some robot against you. You know, 9-11 was, yeah, plane, they flew planes in the buildings, people. I guess I'm, uh, I'm hoping that people that watch me don't think they flew, they, they blew up the buildings. Um, so that's why, you know, people, oh, you know, that's a big conspiracy. So you can see here what's going on. This happens over and over again, this pattern. Another uh, thing is, look at these two tops here. If you draw uh, trend lines there, I mean, not trend lines, horizontal supports. So most of the stuff you do is going to be horizontally. Sure, you can say this, oh, look at, but see, this is the setup where you have this top, you come a bottom, and you're also, and in that Akanashi uh, thing, uh, you, you're getting in on the, uh, I don't like that color. You're getting in. You're getting in where top becomes a bottom, and the smooth, even the moving averages have turned up by now. Right? A million. This happens over and over again. So that's your inflection point entry. But you realize you can't see it here. But there was the kickback. So that's because, and you are really trying to buy that wick window. Everything between the bodies and the wick is what you need to load up here. There's also a kickback here. You can't see it. So that was the other complete, and if you switch back and forth between these, or you have one chart running line chart, but you can't overcomplicate this stuff and start stacking on, my God. I mean, there is no end to it, of course, but it's all based on, um, say, if you put enough uh, compressors on your music, it would sound better. No, you start to lose the actual original intent. You know, you start to, you start to wash it out. Um, you know some of these paintings people do I've seen people show how to paint online I mean I'm halfway through the thing I'm thinking if you stopped right now it would look so cool but then they go overdo it you know so you can overdo anything you can over trade anything does anything work yeah if you don't overdo it right nobody wants to be uh, end up in a, a routine but actually part of them wants to be in a routine and and, and they'll sell you stuff like we well, you know if you're gonna trade you got a routine sure you may have to have a checklist, like when you get in your car. Is there gas in the car? Okay, that's about it when it comes to trading. Is there money in the account? Okay, if you define your risk, okay, go. Right, you're gonna figure out real quick whether the stuff makes sense. You know, do is there such thing as a uh, um, a quiet market, a loud market? Yes. What do you do about it? That's the question. How do you make money from a loud market? And how do you make money for quiet quiet market? And also. Are you willing to um, place multiple orders? That's how you diffuse your risk. You know, scaling is how you diffuse risk. It's not about reducing risk. If you take an initial risk of $200, but you diffuse it down, that's why they use diffusers. Um, this is why you have suspension in your car. Would you drive down the road without suspension? No, your spine would be crushed. Even on a horse, you've got to, you can't sit on a horse and ride it. You got to get, you got to go with the horse. Okay. This is just like riding a horse. I don't know if anybody rides horses. There's no difference here. Okay. You don't want to, you don't want to be out of rhythm with the horse. You're going to get hurt. He's going to, you're just going to not be able to uh, get an efficient uh, ride. You know, all this, everybody is, it, it, a slave of the instrument that they play unless you're going to redesign and come up with a whole new instrument but you can't do that all the instruments you see in forex are predefined if you want to play the guppy this is like playing a giant instrument that you're like um you know what your fingers aren't that big i mean do you really think of course it doesn't matter i mean small finger people can totally uh, make it an instrument anywhere but you just, you realize maybe it's going to take more muscle to, you're going to have to build up, just like you have to build up the size of your account, it's going to take more throttle, more fuel to get that puppy off the ground and launch that project. So if you're going to start on the Euro, it doesn't have a lot of volatility. So it's not going to be very gratifying financially, but tight as spread, learn how to trade a five-minute chart if you're uh, home all day. 
or just learn how to trade the clunkiest, dumbest system on the time frame you can manage. Now here, this is a one hour chart. If we go to the four hour chart, problem is, uh, let's see if I built this on the four hour chart, look how this, look how the time frames. Another thing about line charts that you'll find why candles suck is because I can change time frames from the one hour to the half hour. If I draw this on the uh, on the half hour, the one hour it should queue to the one hour. I mean the half hour, it should queue up. I gotta scrunch it up, but so if we queue this, see the head and shoulders here on the uh, if you switch back and forth. So you drew drew it here. When you come to here, you see the head and shoulders. Um, maybe I'm here. Let me just. Uh, it's inverted head and shoulder. Right? Here's your shoulder, head, shoulder. Um, same thing here, a big choppy. But I see this top become a bottom here. So the half hour, you're you're setting up on the half hour. You're queuing your entry here. This pullback here is deeper, so you'd actually have a different trend line here. This is the one hour trend line, and it's, it's just so simple. People are really not... You know, there's so much wrong information out there. Now, look at the top becomes a bottom here on the half hour, right? We break, we double top into it. Yeah, because nature has a, a fractal crush in point, right? There's the uh, people that build stuff that can take high impact velocity. It's built in a, you know, there's a crinkle, right? Stuff crushes in in a certain way. There's a cave, in fact. And when markets fill these voids, it caves in like this. Um, I should probably made this a different color, this line, and which is which is yellow. I'm already bored with it, but uh, make, make it jump out a little bit. I picked the wrong. No, oh, it's not helping. So, um, but here, here, look at this. Uh, just changing that one color is enough to just kind of rattle you. Um, another thing is, which one of these moves was the move to trade? Um, if you were like waiting all day for this thing to come back here for this just insanely profitable entry, right? Um, wow, you know, here it breaks out and you're like, oh boy, um, this initial down, okay, this is another problem. Psychologically, if you had... Uh, not sold here and it's down here. Are you going to be able to get back in here? Psychologically, if you're like, oh man, and then you sell here and it goes up here and you're like, oh, they stopped me. Okay, it has to all be predefined that you know that you've already planned to sell up there. Now, if you turn on the candles, you can see there's a hammer here. So you figure, yeah. Everybody's going to buy there and scalp to here. But see, it's a ricochet thing, thing. And look at all these doji, doji, doji. Wow. Complete kind of drift down, slam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, 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 bam. I mean, literally, if you have the orders there, you're just loving the whole drama, right? You're making money. Ba bam, bam. It's just like popcorn, right? That's the half hour chart, though. The one hour chart. Here's the daily chart. You see how ridiculous your trade looks like on the daily? It doesn't look so bad. Now, here's the line chart. So what's really going on with this damn currency? And where is all the, where is all the places to get in? Where's all the times we come about? If you can't see this, there's a problem, right? First top. If you can't mark that off, top becomes a double bottom. Ever The party starts, right? Where is the retest zone? Where do we come back to? This. Come back here. Right. Look at that. Look at that hammer. Look at this wick come into that order. That's your order. That's your, I don't know if you got filled there, but you've got to be willing to buy. This is only a 25 pip window to make 100 pips. Are you serious? Come on. Even the guy that put the buy stop here, the confirmation guy, the guy scared out of his mind, put a buy stop here. Or no, he's textbook trader. Mr. Textbook Trader. Well, I just put my order there. I asked some guy in a video recently. Hey, like, why'd you get in so late? And I just kind of try to poke his, uh, rattle his cage a little bit. And uh, he's like, I didn't. I 
put in my order here where I'm supposed to. I saw a candle. He called it the uh, money trade or something. The moolah trade. Big moolah. We're making big moolah. I thought, dude, oh my God. Why don't you put the order down here? See, now he didn't see the line chart, though. I don't even think you can see that on here. And if I turn the colors on of these candles, your brain would just melt trying to find it. Here it's just painfully obvious. I could do all my stuff here. So you draw all your charts up like this. Look at this double top became a bottom. It's crazy. This is dumb. Okay. Well, how did how you get in there? Well, you could have bought, you traded that bounce off of that. You could trade that bounce. Or you could have done the horizontal thing where you just don't care about any of that. And you're going to, um, you're going to go like this. And you're going to say, my world's horizontal. Because price is horizontal. I just don't care. I only buy at support and I sell at resistance. So I'm going to sell here at resistance at first uh, rally up into that. So right there. And I'm going to sell here. And uh, I'm just going to bite the bullet and ride it all the way back to here. Um, I'm going to sell there again. Uh, here, my sell. Huh, double top on the daily. That's crazy. What is the chance of that? You know, these closing prices are there for a reason. Now, this is all that mattered, you know, back in the old days, before we could really overthink something. This is the world. This is, the, this is how it was. You know, nobody, nobody could hit a button and launch 50,000 pieces of spam at you, right? It was not capable. There's no way to, to go boom digitally, you know. So, um, and look at this thing. You got your face ripped off trying to sell that top. Look at the chatter here. Look at the retest of this uh, before it left the station. So this is the doji window. This would be the larger body, say, on the uh, the weekly or something. And if you do now, if you come up with the channels on this, this is kind of like the edge. This is uh, you're projecting into the future on this stuff. And uh, or this is you're like oh, it's in a downtrend, I think, right, on the daily. Like in other words, so this is be, be if you hang it off the lowest close in there. That is your projection for price. Oh, gee, really? But see, you don't really need that because obviously anybody that's sold up here on this on this failure swing is cashed out. They started cashing out at this point right here. Here's where they started make, taking their profits. Right? And you're going to buy here. Obviously, right? That's the next trade. Buy there because that's support. And you're going to buy here and here and here, right? all the way down that's a hundred so you, you're you're prepared to keep buying all the way down but you realize there's going to be a bounce along the way and these are all scalps right you're not gonna you're not gonna buy here and put a stop in here unless you're gonna swing trade it you just don't care but that's not likely you know, yeah sure we come down here right how many days is it gonna take to get there ask yourself that question i guess first off the bat can you can you wait to no, you're probably going to go to the one hour chart and you're going to go, let's see. Um, so it's a problem when you zoom out on this thing. Hey, you're just going to scalp off this uh, thing here. All right. Look at it's happened before. To me, this is the easy money. And the one hour chart, got a buy limit down here. You cash out there, right? You're always going to cash out at the floor. So you, the body's your volatility index, right? Small bodies rule. This is where size matters. The smaller the body, the lower the risk entry from a mechanical stop entry standpoint. So if you're just placing buy stops here, just like good old, this is one hour chart, just good old trade and sell stops here. Oh, you're making money. You don't care about, well, this is a bullish candle, this is a bearish candle, this is engulfing. Get that. Forget about it. You're just going to, I mean, I'm just saying for myself personally, I had to forget about it because now I'm, I put extrapolations on top of speculations on top of speculations on top of extrapolations. 
You basically built a house of cards in your mind so high. It's just going to collapse, right? So keep it simple, as they say. Keep it simple, stupid. I think that was a thing. And not that you're stupid. Just in the same respect, this would, I do have the open and close here. I could make this just a bar chart. Like I can make this literally just pure range. But I wanted to keep the body to show that it is really a um, an indication of low volatility. I don't like this is the one hour chart, so I have to, I don't have to go to the five minute chart to see that. Wow, we haven't gotten anywhere. The guy that's been holding for an hour is like at break even. He's like, huh, I don't know about this trade. That's what causes the reaction, right? People are like, oh, I don't know, indecision. Oh, just made a decision. So if you had a buy stop here for the scalp and you have sell stops trailing beneath, you're not even short on this thing yet, right? That's stupid. And when you see these big, like, are you willing to put in big stops? Because if you're going to trade these big, uh, you've got a sell stop here, yeah, maybe you wait for here, right? Smaller risk. Yeah, a little bit worse fill. But violent um, two-hour cash out, right? And maybe that's all you do. Maybe you got a buy stop here. They, they trapped you a little bit, maybe, depending on how the ask got up there. Because another thing is you can't you can't see the ask on these candles. You, you're just looking at pure bid. You can really can't really say. Um, but if you're waiting for seriously dramatically small things like this, buy stop, sell stop. Yeah, you scalped it. Um, no buy stop here. You're already long coming into uh, the e the last hour of U.S. session. You were already long. Hey, you made money. What the hell? Ten pips stops to make thirty-five pips. Sounds good to me. Now, depending depending what you want to look at. Now, if you look at the weekly chart, well, you're going to risk a ton of money. You know, look at this seventy-five pips spinning top. Look at these entries. Look at this Doji. Now, here's the argument for why the open and close is telling you the story of a moving average this is a moving average of, of volatility because the top to the bottom of this is nothing but the range of that of that week but there was a lot of people made a lot of money in one week up and down on that that's what you know that is an insane uh, Wick. Now you stop sideways. Now here is a little bit less range to that. So a lot of people are more inclined to get aboard the up train. And even this doesn't do what the line chart does. What line chart's giving you like, uh-oh, like, okay, here's the downtrend line. Everybody was all figured that out real quick. Oh, it closed up and this is the trend line to break. And the projection off of that is the you know the low here and that's the uh, so you look at what's going on here what type of situation do you have from a mechanical entry standpoint well they poked through it and then they came all the way back then what do they do what does the market always do before it goes up it goes down just a little bit and stops everybody out and where is that? Right there. 10 pips stop out. Then, kablamo. Every time. Doji, look right. 25 pips stop out. Take all these tight weak hands out. Up and away. What's this? The scalp sell limit everybody's going to get their fill here you didn't get it there was the big wick before there was no stop out so it's pretty subtle you got to look for this stuff and you just don't want sometimes you just don't you have to cut back on what you're looking at because you're overlooking at it people overanalyze stuff the world's the world you're going to die the world's stupid like people are dumb we're all stupid right we're all dumb here is 
the one hour world of doji now this is what i was trying to launch this doji script where when you see a doji you know you just pull the trigger for buy stops sell stops or just put on a hedge that's another approach just just put a hedge on right there so you only have so many trades per day and on the, on the four hour depending on which broker you're on you only have a couple trades a day like like uh after this big four hour smash here and this is when all the markets are just everything's going nuts right but look at here's all your uh trades here you can pretty much see what you what you missed you have to look back at what you missed right here's a uh, hedge you just put on a hedge right now it's a no-brainer right hey doji boom mechanical trading you know build a doji bot right or just have a doji script and you see a doji and you press a button you know it's like if you see it if you have a hammer everything looks like a nail but you have to have a hammer script for a nail so you need a doji script for a doji you need a um for a big bullish or bearish candle or a big candle just big volatility you need big limits on either side uh, possibly or you just don't trade like you don't have to trade you can just trade breakouts your whole life you could just trade doji scripts your whole life you just keep fine-tuning that right I just fine-tune it don't go past the um, you know if you're if you have a concept if you're inclined to change your strategy open another account open a demo run that strategy by itself and let that guy do his task right you can't ask your employees to do everything there's a producer there's an arranger right these guys have their slots you know, let's do, do a movie right make a movie you got a guy all he does is is like hook stuff up you got a guy all he does is you know sit there and try to record stuff just the audio he's not even trying to film it it's no different like this or at least it shouldn't be so thing is um, I, t I totally think it's possible to trade mechanically um, and for a little bit extra edge you can be aware of the fact that it's like where, where are you living in the bigger picture and just like I've said a million times <laughs> it's 80% chop everybody knows that I'm not the only one saying that it's not just about me damn it but look at all these wicks are you gonna tell me that anybody that was in this stuff was able to make any money during this phase without being totally frustrated to death now there's no doubt that these two dojis before this crush was probably the most spectacular and I don't even know if we're up or down trend it wouldn't matter look at this stuff here take this out BAM some people sold here on confirmation hell even they made money but guess look at their risk though they risk this much it's a daily chart you get a lot of time a lot of time to just get angry about the fact that it keeps going down another thing about daily chart is that when this first sells off this dead cat bounce down here this 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 could be very frustrating like this is like not a big bounce is it wham one more smash so I just like the scalps I don't want to be in these I, I'd, I'd rather just uh, make my money in 48 seconds or 48 minutes I can't handle this like this if I was if I was buying in this even if I scaled into this oh my god can you imagine this trade like who's got the wherewithal to uh, okay so you're only down like uh, it's 25 pip panels but still um, this first uh, time this market mechanically takes out makes a higher high and like traps the uh, bulls is here so actually there's only two traps here but here's the big monster doji but look at this uh, this last kickback they take out the low of that day and then bam here's the retest of the doji look right they want to chop all that there's a 25 pip window you're locking into this trade you could have scalped it, the, the bodies and be done with it 
Or you could have held, you know, all the way till they trapped these guys. Hey, come back. That's all it is. And just don't put enough. Just don't put too many uh, candles on your chart, for God's sake, right? All you care about is what's going on right now. You can't fix the past. You're never going to make back the money you lost from that trade. That trade's gone. So, what's next? I'll decide how much uh, how much you want to look at these things. Now, if you have a one-hour um, doji script, look at when you change the color on the line chart, so you get these little um, gravestones that show up. These are like psycho dojis on the 15. There's a baby doji. These are, these are true gravestones here. Because you turn the line chart, it's picking the color of the line chart. It's using the color of the line chart for the uh, to make that candle. Because it, the, open, it, the open matches the close, so the line chart doesn't know what to do with it. You should see that on a one minute chart. If you're scalping, um, see this is a rare event. You could probably build a robot. Of course, it's going to be broker dependent because everybody's one minute's a different slate milliseconds off. If you just took those trades, right? Buy that, buy that one minute hammer. Just trade, just trade Doji scripts on this stuff. But see, the problem is you're not going to be able to benefit from this giant move unless you predefine that. Anyways, oh, here's the one minute. You see the spread's pretty hairy. The spread is the the one minute bar, so that's why people want to go down a smaller time frame and try to make money. The problem is as soon as you buy here, it has the the wick is the spread on the one minute candles. That's why you're not making any money when you drop down to a one minute chart, thinking, oh, you know, look the patterns here. Yeah, but there's a spread and built into that pattern that's kicking your ass, and it's basically the range of the one minute is the spread. You have one minute of losses guaranteed you're going to hold one minute of losses two minutes three minutes if you're lucky you'll be at break even right and this is a pretty decent spread on here so see you go down a smaller time frame oh look at this look at this head and shoulders yeah but you had to pay for the shoulder you couldn't buy the head that was the bid you never saw that price you could never buy that price down there that's why we're all losing 100% of the time every time we pull the trigger. So get get over this 90% of people lose. Like, if I was in the top 10%, dude, we're all losing every time we pull the trigger, okay? That's all I'm saying. Anyways, hope that helps.